What's up creative minds? I am Sir Angel and this is your Photoshop. Now, what is the correct blur radius to use when doing frequency separation in Photoshop? Let's find out. And if you like this video well enough, be sure to hit the like button, smash the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to this channel, and leave a comment in the comment section down below. See you in Photoshop. Alright guys, welcome to Photoshop. I've got our images fired up already, as usual. But before we proceed, there are a few things I want you to take note. Please, listen to this. Now, before you consider which blur radius you need, these are the things you should consider. 1. What f-stop was used to take the picture or what f-stop are you going to use to take the picture? Now, the aperture you use, the aperture that was used to take the picture, affects what amount of blur radius you need. Yeah, because it, it does affect the overall sharpness most of the times. So you need to consider that first. Now, you need to consider as well. Now, this is the second point. You need to consider as well whether you're editing a full body shot or you're editing a headshot. Yeah, you will need different blur radius for different types of shots. Or is it a medium shot? Do you get my point? You will need different blur radius for different types of shots. Now, you should also note that each picture should be treated differently even if it was shot with the same camera even if you shot all the images with the same camera you should still treat them differently you should not select the same blur radius for all pictures and say oh i shot i shot all these images with the same camera so i'm editing them with the same blur radius no don't do that don't don't do that you need to select different blur radius for different pictures you need to treat each picture differently now you need to consider the lighting used was the picture shot in a studio was it shot outside if it was shot outside was it shot with the sun was it shot with a strobe was it an overcast day and you used natural light to shoot it you need to consider all that as well all that play an important role in how sharp the image will come out do you get my point now you need to consider the model skin type yes the model skin type you've got different kinds of models um what might work for this model might not be ideal for the other model even if you're using the same camera settings in the same lighting conditions you might want to treat different skin types differently some some skins are softer than the others or smoother than the others i don't know if that's the right way to say it but you get what i mean like more smooth than the others all right now that we've got all that out of the way let's jump into my experiment and after that i'm going to tell you what blur radius to use but i'm going to prove to you why you need to use that blur radius you get my point so let's get to the experiment now so i'll use this one first i'll go ahead and i'll duplicate this and i'll zoom in and I'll create my simple frequency separation action. Now I'm going to use a very low blur radius, something like a one, yeah. And then I'm going to select my high frequency layer and I'm going to select my clone stamp. I'm going to try and see if I can remove some blemishes from the high frequency layer. It's option, click and click, option, click and click. Now the blemishes I'm trying to clean are not responding to treatment <laughs> right it's not cleaning why this is happening because the separation i did was not done properly now the blur radius was too low it was too small and as a result we still have most of our texture in our low frequency layer right so we have part of our high frequency layer in our low frequency layer and that's why that is happening now if i go ahead and i select the low frequency layer and i select the mixer brush too by the way this is the settings i use for frequency separation most of the times in case you want to copy it if i try and brush the blemish you can see it disappears why because the blemish is in the low frequency which is not what we want um unless you want to do it for artistic reasons for artistic purposes that is not right so i'll go ahead and i'll try um doing a quick frequency separation Remember, when you're doing frequency separation, don't mix highlights and shadows unless it's very necessary. Unless it is for artistic reasons, or should I say for known reasons. Right. So this is just a quick frequency separation. Ob obviously, I'll take my time and I'll do it.
properly if i was doing it um and you should too right so that's just a quick one now if you if you can notice we've lost a lot of detail now compare the before to the after frequent separation that's a loss that is a lot of detail lost right now i know you can go ahead and decrease the opacity yeah but why not do it the right way right i'll go ahead and i'll delete this i'll zoom out and i'll create another simple frequency layer simple frequency separation layer and i'll go ahead and i'll use a very high blur radius something like 50 right and i'll hit ok and i'll go ahead and i'll zoom in now let's try and see if we'll be able to remove some blemishes from the high frequency layer now option click click Ooh, it's, it's, it's working it's working is it is it really working no it's not working well it is working on the high frequency but if we try and let me, let me clean this one now if you try and soften the skin which is the next step when we're doing frequency separation after removing the blemishes this is what happens not a lot why is this happening this is happening because we still have part of the low frequency in the high frequency yeah now when it was too low we had part of our high frequency in the low frequency now it is too high so we have part of our low frequency in our high frequency and you realize when you try smoothing the skin it's not working and i know i'm the one that says subtlety is key you need to do it subtly but this is not working really look at that that's not what you want if i zoom out obviously i didn't do it well but even if i try to do well it's not really working right i'll go ahead and i'll delete it and i'll move on to the full body shot before i come back to show you the correct blur radius to use now just a quick one i'll zoom in quickly and select my frequency separation action select a blur radius of 0.5 yeah 0.5 or even 0.4 right now i'll go ahead and i'll select the high frequency let's see if we can remove some blemishes okay clone stamp option click click option click click option click click it's not working now i used a lower blur radius than i used in the previous image why because they shot differently this is a full body shot and that is a, hem, a headshot that is a headshot so you need lower blur radiuses for full body shots as compared to close-up shots right we'll get into that in a bit but as you can realize same thing is happening it wasn't done properly the separation wasn't done properly so we still have part of our high frequency in our low frequency layer so if you try clean the blemishes it's not clean however I got, if i go ahead and select the uh, mixer brush 2 and i try to smooth out or smoothing out i don't know how about they say it smoothing out the low frequency you realize it is removing the blemishes now that's not what we really want and it is removing the blemishes all right but it is also taking away a lot of texture look at the before and after no i don't think this is what we want i'll go ahead and i'll delete it now if i was to select a very high blur radius something like that's too much something like uh, that's too much as well maybe something like uh, 30 yeah something something extra oh okay if i select something like that and i select my clone stamp and i try to remove some blemishes the blemishes do remove yeah it gets removed but what happens is if you try brushing on the low frequency layer not a lot happens just as we experience when we're doing the other one now what is happening vice versa we've got most of our low frequency now in our high we've got some not most some of our low frequency in the high frequency so the separation wasn't done properly now let's go back now let me show you how you can actually nail the shot each time let's do something now we've done high we've done low yeah let's do it again let's try and find the sweet spot let's try and see if we can find the sweet spot for this image okay 
right i'll use 10 for this image i'll go ahead and i'll select the high frequency i'll select my clone stamp option click click option click click it is going it is cleaning yeah i'm cleaning the blemishes it is cleaning yes it is okay now let's test the low frequency layer to see if it's working as well i'll zoom out a little bit and remember this is only a quick frequency separation thing okay now as you can see it is brushing well now i've nailed the blur radius now how do i how do i nail the blur radius i'll show you that in a bit stick with me i'll show you how i nailed the blur radius obviously this is just a rough work as i said if i was doing it for a client or if i was doing it to post on ig or anything like that i take my time and i do, I, I do it properly now we still got good amount of sharpness in the high frequency and we've got the skin tones there as well and you can work on it it is not too much and it's not too small when you're done with the frequency separation and you think you want it back to not back to natural but you know you want to make it look more natural you can go ahead and decrease the opacity here on the whole frequency separation layer group so that is it but how do i nail the blur radius that is the big question now i'll show you now whether you're using an action or you're actually creating it from scratch when you get here pause zoom out the image yeah select the skin now one you have to zoom out of your image two you have to make sure you can see the outlines of the features of your model's face so you can see the outlines of the eyes you can see the outlines of the eyebrows the outlines of the nose the out outlines of the lips the outlines of the head and all that and three you have to make sure you're still able to see the subject and recognize the subject yeah trust me on this so before and that's after we can still see no that is Liz her name is Liz right so that's before we can see it is Liz and that's after we can still see it is Liz yeah yeah great if it, if it was me you still see it's say angel there yeah so make sure you can still see your subject your subject is recognizable and you should be on the right spot now there is no specific magic number so it's not like oh i've got 14 so it should be 14 no it shouldn't be 14 you can play around and see whatever works for you um so for this image i'd find it around 14 12 10 ish 11 13 you see within that range yeah but first make sure the textures are bled out completely also make sure the textures are bled out just enough yeah not not because i'm saying you should make sure it's bled out completely and you can see see you can, and you can still see the outlines you should just zoom out to the image and just say you see it and go ahead with it now make sure it is bled out just enough you don't need too much on there you're not trying to blur the whole image keep that in your mind keep in your mind when you're doing frequency separation and you're doing that you're choosing the blur radius you're not blurring out the whole image you're just blurring out the textures keep it in your mind you're just blurring out the textures so make sure you blurred out the textures completely but you can still recognize the subjects in the photo and hit ok and it should be good that is it that is how you select the correct blur radius but remember the points we listed at first and then when selecting the blur radius remember the key points zoom out of the image make sure the textures are blurred out just enough you don't need too much make sure you can still recognize the subjects even after selecting your blur radius and make sure you can see the outlines of the facial features well and that is it you should have the correct blur radius all right thank you for watching this video to the end i hope you picked up a thing or two 
now if you like this video well enough be sure to hit the like button and smash the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions at all leave it down below and i'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible now if you didn't like this video at all for any reason please hit the subscribe button as well because i'll be releasing a lot of videos and i'll definitely release something that you like it's a challenge take me up on that hit the subscribe button and i'll release something you like if i don't release anything you like let me know in the comment section below right remember my name is seren joe this is your photo chef stay creative keep smiling check out my instagram at i am seren joe check out my website at www.serenjophotography.com now why am i moving this hand like that i'll put it down right i'll see you in the next video guys i'll be i'll be i'll be releasing videos weekly <laughs> weekendly all right guys i'll be releasing videos every weekend so stay tuned stay tuned keep keep an eye out for them <laughs>